We'll get more into the preset manager in just a moment. I want to first give you an overview of the controls that you do see on your tutorial screen. Along the top right are a series of colorful bars that are the mutation controls. There is a mutation menu button that allows you to control mutations. Along the bottom of your screen are mutation wells. These mutation wells encircle the main preview well of Texture Anarchy Explorer. And the main preview well has transform controls, scale, rotate, and move. Along the left side is a lighting editor. At top left are a series of layer controls. And at the top of the interface are three material wells, the color well, the alpha well, and the bump well. The color well controls the gradient of colors that you see in your textures. And if I hold down my Option key on the Mac, it would be your Alt key on Windows, and I Option click on my color well, you'll see that the color is turned off of the previewed texture. I'll option click to turn that back on and show you that if I option click to turn off the bump well, let me undo and redo that, you can see that what the bump does is it gives a three-dimensional appearance to your texture. So the bump is actually a grayscale image and the whites in that image create a sense of height and the darks in that image create a sense of depth. The preview window, as you can see, does exactly what its name implies. It shows you the texture that you're mixing up. So let's talk a little bit about that texture. Right now, we have a snakeskin texture. Attached to the preview window are a series of transform controls. And the transform controls act pretty standardly. The scale control, if I click down, hold, and drag to the right, makes my texture larger. And if I click and drag to the left, my texture gets smaller. This is, of course, the way I created the three sample files that we looked at before we opened up Texture Anarchy Explorer. The rotate control rotates my entire texture. And the move tool moves my texture. I can also click down and drag inside of my preview window to get the same kind of movement. You'll notice that the material wells, the bump and the color, update based on the transformation that happens to the texture. So as I scale my texture up, the bump and the color that make up that texture scale up as well. So where did I get this pre-made texture that we're starting from. Well, I access this as a preset through the preset manager. And off screen, I'm going to click on a button that looks like a square. And when I click on that button, I get the preset manager. The preset manager is a container that holds a number of pre-made textures as mentioned. And these textures are categorized according to their alikeness. So for instance, we have an earth category that contains a mud-like texture, a moon surface texture, and a cracked earth texture. We have a fabric category that contains simulated fabric textures, velvet curtains, for instance. And we have a skin tone category that contains mostly subtle skin tone textures, for instance, skin with freckles. 
Let's go to the metal category and choose one of my favorite textures, painted gold. To choose the texture, I simply click on the thumbnail icon and then click the check mark to say OK. Let's choose another texture to experiment with. In this case, I'm going to go to the stone category and choose one of my favorite textures, which is called Corroded Wall. Now that we have a new texture loaded up, let's talk about the mutation sliders and the mutation menu. The mutation sliders are very simple to use. They generate randomly defined, mathematically generated versions of the texture that you have in your preview window. If I click towards the top of the slider rung, you'll see that the textures that are generated in the mutation wells are very different from the texture that they are sampling from. However, if I go down towards the bottom of the mutation rung and click on the lower level of the mutation sliders, you'll see that the textures that appear in the mutation wells are very similar to the texture that they are sampling from. There is a, a mutation menu that I'm going to click on that is a set of properties that actually define what is being mutated. Right now we have all of the properties turned on to mutate. If I clicked on the select none choice and then clicked OK and then I clicked on any of the mutation sliders you'll see that there are no mutations that occur and that's because we have no properties in the mutation menu set to mutate. Now instead of having all of the properties turned off or all of the properties turned on I can choose to rotate just a few of the properties. For instance I can choose Mutate Color and Mutate Scale, click OK, and then when I click on my Mutate sliders, you'll see that only a few properties are mutating. If I turn all of the properties back on, I want to point out that as I click on the mutation sliders to generate new textures, if I find that I like a texture that's been randomly generated, I can option click on that particular mutation well and save that particular texture as I continue to mutate and generate other new ones. I'll option click back on a second one and you'll see now that I am placeholding two different textures. If I option click back on those mutation wells, then I have unlocked those particular wells and the mutations continue to generate. If I decide to select one of the mutations and play around with that particular image, all I really need to do is click into that particular well. I have then selected a new texture and anything that I do will now affect this particular texture. So I can now scale this texture up or down and rotate it. Now let's say that I like this texture that I've created and I want to save it for future use. In that case, I would once again use the Preset Manager, which is unfortunately off screen. And in this case, I would use the second of the two Preset Manager buttons. That button looks like a plus sign. And if I click on that button, I'm once again put inside of the Preset Manager. In this case, I'm shown a thumbnail image of the new texture that I want to save as a preset. And I'm given the option of naming it. I'll call it Swirls. 
and putting down some notes, I'll say that this is Debbie's texture. When I click the check mark, this texture will get saved into the category that is showing. In this case, the stone category is showing. Perhaps I want to put the swirls texture into the surreal category instead. I'll click my check mark OK. And if we then access the main preset manager button, again that's off screen and it's a square, you'll see that in the surreal category we now have our custom preset saved.